The harsh realities of island life in the tropics will stretch a tougher survivor. But getting stranded in a temperate zone has its own unique pitfalls. The temperate zones lie north and south of the tropics. They have relatively moderate temperatures and are more populated, especially on the coast. But just because you're stranded in a developed part of the world doesn't mean you're safe. If you're lost, there's no guarantee of rescue. Could be days, could be weeks. So you better learn the basics. Okay, go! If you're stuck on the coast in a temperate region and you follow the shore for long enough, you're gonna find help. But you'll need food on the way. Here are some new tips to show you how to find it and how to cook it. Start by looking around protected tidal beaches and it shouldn't be long before you get lucky. Look at the loads and loads of these mussels here that I can use. And then like this limpet. And there's lots of nice spirulina in here. And that's all going to be good. Packed full of vitamin B12, this seaweed can be a good substitute for meat. Oh! <laughs> oh crab as well. And these little shore crabs, as long as they're small like that, uh, those are fine to eat, just raw. Only eat crabs like this raw if the water quality is good. <laughs> the taste of sand and salt. Now to find somewhere to cook up my feast. Actually, this will do. Nice and sheltered from the wind, above the high tide mark. Let's go find myself some wood. There's plenty of driftwood lying at the high tide mark. It's covered in salt and still damp. I'll need lots of tinder to get it going dead grass is perfect. Just run your fingers through it, like through your hair, and you get all the nice dead dry stuff. And then it's going to catch and go. And that's nice when it goes first time. I'm trying to get some of this seafood broth going with these mussels. And all I want to do is throw all of these, just like they are, sand and everything in there, pop the limpets out. Add some water and boil it up. As mussels are essentially filter feeders, in poor water areas they can be high in concentrated toxins. It's best to cook them properly. Once the broth is boiled, I'll pick out the seafood and then strain the rest. My socks will work a treat. What I want is all the juice and all the goodness without all of the sand. Fishy socks. But at least it's warming. Coastlines like this can offer the survivor a lot. But if you choose to head inland, temperate regions present many different landscapes. Mountains, valleys and grassland. But one of the most common is the forest. The whole place is just teeming. Thousands of miles of dense forest. There's potential for food and water, but it's not all good. Yeah. Down there are some pretty nasty creatures. Good luck there! Here you go, come a bit. There you go, a little salamander. Get him in these chopsticks. You want to be a bit careful not to touch the skin of this. Actually secretes 
some poison out of it. But yeah, it's a pretty clear indicator. Nature gives you something bad, very brightly colored yellow spots. Doesn't move very fast, you know. It's not gonna bite you or anything, which means it's gonna have some sort of defense. And its defense is the poison it releases. So you don't wanna eat that. But kind of beautiful as well, eh? Okay, let him go. Of all the creatures that live in temperate forests, there's one that's guaranteed to strike fear into the heart of any survivor. Just see him there. Okay, come down. Come down. That's a brown bear. Okay, we are very close here. Probably in about 50 meters. No sudden movements at all. is thumping at the moment. But he hasn't spotted us, I don't think. Unbelievable to see a, see a bear this close. OK, he's just spotted us. He's turning away. sudden movement he's gonna pick up and really if they go for you you just gotta you gotta back away slowly if they come for you fast you gotta run best thing to do, drop something of yours a rucksack and they're gonna go straight for that first to smell and that might give you just a pressure few minutes to get away but it means we've got to be just so careful moving through these woods Forest survival, any kind of weapon is going to help. Ideally, a rifle. But if you're stranded without warning, you're unlikely to have one of those. Sometimes, though, nature throws you a bone, or in the case of Montana, a stone. I just found this, found this arrowhead back there. You know, some of these date back literally thousands of years. Would have been shaped and made by Native Americans who use them to hunt with and to protect themselves. Native Americans use bow and arrows to hunt deer, elk, and bison. And if it was good enough for them, it's good enough for me.